Chatham House Rule by John Chapman. You may have attended conferences where it is stated that the event is being run under the Chatham House Rule. What is the Chatham House Rule? A quick search on Google will bring up the Wikipedia which tells us, when a meeting or part thereof is held under the Chatham House Rule, participants are free to use the information received. But neither the identity nor the affiliation of the speakers nor that of any other participant may be revealed. The rule allows people to speak as individuals and to express views that may not be those of their organisations and therefore encourages free discussion. Speakers are free to voice their own opinions without concern for their personal reputation or their official duties and affiliations. This is relevant for programmes of business change and for project work. If we are seeking to identify new ways of working, to encourage innovative and original thinking, it may well be important that the individuals involved do not feel constrained by the politics of their organisation, or that their own position could be threatened. An example of this was a series of interviews I undertook with an organisation who were seeking to change their ways of working, their business processes and to bring new life to their operation. It was agreed all interviews would be under Chatham House rule. The first meeting was with the chief executive who proudly said, amongst other things, that there was a new policy to allow working from home, to introduce flexibility and improve work-life balance. This would help retain staff and demonstrate the directors have trust in the team. On meeting one of those senior managers, I reiterated that I had been informed of the policy to encourage working from home introducing flexibility without referencing the source of this information. Unexpectedly, I received a strong retort that whenever the chief executive was in the office, if someone was not at their desk, they were the first to start asking questions about where they were, what they were doing, and why they weren't in the office. In delivering change, we need to delve into the essence of what is said and the reality of what happens. With the example just noted, the focus needed to be on educating the Chief Executive on how their words on flexibility and trust were then, in the eyes of the employees, negated at the first opportunity. At Touchstone Energy, we are very experienced in programme and project delivery. When we work with you and propose the Chatham House Rule, it is to protect the innocent, encourage open debate, identify real as opposed to perceived issues, and assist in ensuring that change can be successfully delivered. My name is Jessica Whitby. Thank you for listening to this recording. For more information, visit our website at www.touchstoneenergy.co.uk. Thank you.